What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 97L organizing and developing off the coast of the Dominican Republic in the Caribbean Sea at this current point in time. Last night, we were seeing a lot more convection firing up than we are right now, especially towards the center of circulation. Look at all that, convec that convective plume that really took off a little bit last night. That kind of st uh, stuff is r rather typical for tropical development of this caliber. It's October 31st. We're looking at a potentially a last system in the Atlantic before things get quiet, and this and at this current point in time, this is th this thing is still an invest, and it's doing its best to organize and develop. This kind of fluctuation is typical from what I have seen, primarily because it's trying to get its act together. And even though there's not as much convection as there was as there was last night, especially towards the center of circulation, based off of recent satellite data, it does show like that it's starting to potentially rebuild again towards the, uh, the eastern uh, part of the, uh, near the center of circulation. So this is definitely something we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. Now, I will say there has been a disconnect between the models and the conditions as well as the real-time data that I have seen. So whatever you see in the models, take those with a grain of salt, and I'll explain why as we continue to move on. Here's what we have in, with the National Hurricane Center. We now have a 60% chance of formation in the next seven days with Invest 97L. Shower and thunderstorm activity in association with a trough of low pressure over the eastern Caribbean Sea has diminished and not become any better organized this afternoon. Although environmental conditions appear marginally conducive, keep that in mind for later, for further development during the next several days while the system moves westward over the central and southwestern Caribbean Sea, a tropical depression could form by the latter part of this week. Regardless of development, the system has the potential to produce heavy rains over portions of Central America towards uh, the end of the, this week. 20% chance of formation in the next 48 hours, 60% chance of formation in the next seven days. So that's what we have right now. It was 3070 earlier this morning, so please do keep that in mind. Earlier this morning, it was 3070 before the convection started uh, dying down and then starting to rebuild again in the center of circulation. So this is definitely something to pay attention to as time continues to go on. If we go ahead and show you some of the models that we're talking about, here's the track models we have at this current point. Track models have this thing approaching Central America, either near Nicaragua or Honduras, with a potential uh, with a potential northward turn going on after that, as I've seen with some models previously. In the meantime, uh, we, if you take a look at the HMON and the HWARF, they're, two, they're basically the upper and uh, lower part of this. The HMON is towards Central Nicaragua. The H uh, the H wharf is near Honduras, so definitely something to pay attention if you're pretty much anywhere from Honduras down to Costa Rica for a potential landfall spot before turning out into the Gulf of Belize and then moving uh, toward uh, moving on from there. So that's what we have the track models and the intensity models. The intensity models are rather split on what's potentially going to happen. We have some intensity models getting this up to hurricane strength, while others keep this around tropical storm strength. So that's why I was kind of telling you there's a bit of a disconnect between the models and the real-time data, the hurricane models rather. The observational models aren't really showing that much happening, and we'll show you those in a second, but I'm not, I'm not I'll to be honest with you guys, I'm not really liking the operational models this time around, primarily because of all the conditions that are going on, and we'll get to those in a minute as well. But if we go ahead and show you and kind of dig deeper into this. We have the HMON and HWARF really uh, being the huge outliers, getting this up to a pretty strong hurricane strength as this thing approaches Nicaragua and f uh, from then on out. So we'll run those models in just a second. But in the meantime, I want to go ahead and talk about the conditions right here. Here's the conditions that I am noting as of right now. We have 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degree Fahrenheit waters all the way to the uh, Central America. And... That's what I'm concerned about for the first part because these are record-breaking water temperatures that I am noting here. And these are record-breaking in the way that is not is really good for tropical development. And the, the, longer, this, uh, the longer this thing really ta uh, takes to organize and develop, the more it's going to be eating into those good conditions. And we could potentially see something happening in the next couple of days or so. 
So that's the global sea temperatures. Here's the ocean heat content. The ocean heat content where the system is right now is in an area of about 125 to 150 OHC, which for those of you who do not know how much energy that is, let's say a hundred. Oh, we look at it and say it's 100 OHC. That is favorable under the right conditions for rapid intensification. 150 OHC under the right conditions, like we saw with Hurricane Otis previously, is great for explosive int intensification. Anything higher than that, that's a big yikes from me. And where this thing is right now, it's around this area right here, where it's an area of around 125 to 150 OHC before moving further to the west and getting into areas of 175 to potentially 200 OHC near uh, across the Caribbean Sea, nearing Jamaica, nearing Jamaica as well. So that's going to be an interesting situation and to kind of see how this whole thing plays out from that angle. And if we go ahead and show you the wind shear, the wind shear pretty much from where this thing is developing to Central America is 10 to 15 knots. When the NHC said there was marge, uh, conditions were marginally conducive, um, I looked at, at everything and I, see, and I see all this. And while I do agree to some extent that the conditions are marginally conducive, the, uh, that's, uh, that, the really big thing that's going to make or break this is if the storm gets in its own way or if dry air starts to intrude it because the OHC looks good. The global sea temperatures look good, and the and the wind shear looks incredibly good. And those are three factors that I am really concerned about. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the, the dry air forecast to kind of get a better understanding of kind of what's been going on, the relative humidity. There's not really that much dry air in the Caribbean Sea, even from the European at this current point in time. There is some towards the northwestern Caribbean Sea over here. However, where this system is organizing and expected to uh, come ashore... The humidity does not get below 50%, which means that there is quite a bit of moist air for this 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 system to really work with. And that coupled with the insane global sea temperatures with the really high ocean heat content and with the weak wind shear, that's a recipe for something to potentially happen. Now, I'm not saying it will or not, but there is a decent chance of this. In fact, I'm going to be having an interview with Weather Center Nazario later today to kind of discuss uh, some of these possibilities. So be sure you stay tuned and check out that as time continues to go on, and we will get him on the line later this evening to kind of discuss what's going on. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and show you some of the rest of the operational models. I want to start with the European because the European's not really showing that much developing. And we'll show you the shear forecast because the shear throughout the time this is going to be organizing and developing remains quite weak all the way until it gets to Central America. And the European does have something potentially developing down the road towards Nicaragua. However, they're forecasting this to remain at tropical depression strength. And to be honest with you guys, that's something I don't really like. I don't really like. I don't really like the forecast with this, primarily because of the, all the conditions that are there. I could understand. Uh, I could get understand it if there was a bit more wind shear, an association with this, or something like that. But from what I have seen so far, we've seen weak wind shear, which is about ten to fifteen knots. That's favorable for development. Record high global sea temperatures and record ocean heat content values, as well as moist air to kind of uh, neatly wrap this in a little bow. Now, the scenario I can, in which I can see this is if the storm gets in its own way or basically it has some infighting where it has another low pressure system trying to develop and kind of take over, and maybe that takes a little bit longer. But from that, uh, from then on out, I'm not exactly liking this forecast from the European. Personally, I think I think a tropical storm is not off the table at this current point in time. I'm not going out there saying, oh, there's going to be a Category 3 hurricane making landfall in Central America. No, I'm not doing that. But I do think at least a tropical storm is not off the table at this current point in time. So that's what we have with the European. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS. And the GFS has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. The GFS has always been one of those very aggressive models. Even that and the ensembles all are, have been quite aggressive, to say at the very least. 
The GFS is showing signs of organization and development, potentially strengthening up to tropical storm strength before making landfall in Nicaragua and Honduras, and then entering the Gulf of Belize, impacting the Yucatan Peninsula, and then probably dissipating from then on out. That's something I definitely could see happening. This thing taking its time to organize becomes a tropical storm before making landfall in Nicaragua and then heading to, uh, towards the north in, while impacting Central America. That's what we have going on with the GFS model at this current point. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the CMC model. The CMC has been one of those more consistent model runs, to say at the very least, and the CMC, interestingly enough, does not really show that much development with the 12Z if we go ahead and show you the 0Z run, it wasn't really showing that much either, which is pretty interesting to say at the very least, because the conditions that are in the Caribbean right now are completely different than what all these models are saying. Remember this uh, for, uh, from Otis. Remember this from Lee. Remember this from Idalia. Models are one thing, but conditions are a whole other ballpark, and there is quite favorable conditions for development in all aspects. Now, if the storm gets in its own way, like I said earlier, that could be something to discuss. But for now, pay attention to the conditions and pay less attention to the models at this current point in time. That's my uh, my two cents right here. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the NavGem. NavGem has been pretty interesting. It's been a more aggressive system, uh, model, to say at the very least. Forecasting this to make landfall as a tropical depression before moving out to sea. And that's pretty much the last we have from that. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and show you the Icon model. The Icon's been a pretty interesting model, to say at the very least. The Icon is potentially calling for tropical storm strength before making landfall somewhere in Central America and then just figuring it out from there because the Icon run at that point's a little wonky. So it's definitely something to take with a grain of salt, but I'm still paying attention to it. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some of the Hurricane models. What I just showed you was the regular operational models. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the Hurricane models that we have pulled up. We're going to start with the HMON model. Here's what we have going on with the HMON. The HMON is having this thing quickly organizing and, de uh, and developing in, in, in the next 48 hours or so. And then from then on out, it starts to strengthen, da uh, strengthen down. Let's go ahead and show you the main sea level pressure winds. First of all, it gets down to 990 millibars, starts to get down to hurricane strength as it approaches Nicaragua as a 963 uh, millibar hurricane, potentially category two, uh, 2 strength as it makes landfall, and then uh, land interaction weakens it considerably as it moves through Central America. So the HMOD is calling for a potential category 2 hurricane to make landfall and cause some damage in Nicaragua. So that's what we have the HMOD. The h wharf model has also been pretty interesting to say at the very least. The H Wharf has been one of those models that have been have, are normally more aggressive than the rest of them. However, we are going to show it in, in this exercise primarily because it's the kind of like the worst case scenario to kind of give you an understanding of what could happen. The H Wharf is showing signs of organization and development quite quickly and strengthening up to a hurricane in the next 75 hours before starting to sh uh, really rapidly intensify and make landfalls around a 939 millibar system. Potentially around high-end Category 3, low-end Category 4 around Nicaragua before weakening due to land interaction. And that's pretty much the last we hear from uh, this tropical system at this current point. So models are kind of scattered all over the place right now. We'll get some more insight as the conditions continue to improve and as the storm structure continues to consolidate. We're having an interview once again with Weather Center Nazario tonight, so be sure you tune in at 7 p.m. for that interview. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right now. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.